Luke chapter 22. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Now we're getting to the point. This is what Jesus was born. This is what Jesus was lived to do. Become the Passover lamb. Behold the lamb of God. To take away the sin of the world. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. Remember where we left off in 21? He's in the temple. He's teaching. They're coming to hear Jesus. And not them. Pilate said for envy. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscar, Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. So, whenever Jesus picked up Judas, how many years? He, Jesus, about 30. This is 33 AD. Three years of ministry. Whenever he picked up Judas, Judas did not have the devil or Satan. Unto chapter 22. Out of the 12 disciples. And it, it didn't even have to be the 12 disciples. The Bible said there would be one that would sell Jesus out for 30 pieces. It could have been one of his followers. It could have been one of the people he healed. But Satan saw occasion that he found one of the disciples that would be willing. That would bow down and say, hey, I worship you, Satan. And when you read the other accounts of the Gospels, it is found that after Mary breaks the, the alabaster box over his head, you could have sold this and given this to the poor, and Jesus rebukes him. And then from there he goes off and talks with the priest. Judas was said to be the treasurer and held the bag. He had a little problem with money and how it was spent. Then enter Satan to Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. He went his way and communed with the chief priests and the captains how he might betray him unto them. So <clears throat> Judas went to the priest. The priest didn't come to Judas. And they were looking for someone to come. Something to do. They've been having their little councils. How can we get rid of them? In comes Judas. They were glad. Now, I want you to go back to Matthew 1. I want you to go back to Mark. I want you to go to Luke 22. Luke 1 to 22. Find me a place in these three Gospels where you find the chief priest the pharisees ever to be glad with all the healing the woman she stands up upright she's no more bowed over the man with a withered hand is now holding his son's hand and feels it the leprous people are now healed and they can come in the community that made him angry but when somebody comes in and says hey listen I'll turn Jesus over to you secretly. Yay! All right! Isn't that interesting? 22 chapters and now we see them glad. And covenanted. Notice how the Holy Spirit uses that word, covenant. They didn't make bargain. They didn't. They coveted to give him money. And he promised and saw opportunity to betray him, to turn over to the enemies, unto them in the absence of the multitude. Remember said they feared the people? Judas is like, I'll let you know when he's all by himself. I don't know what the day and the time is, but the Bible speaks about the Gethsemane. Judas knew that Jesus resulted there often. So whether he had Gethsemane on his mind the whole time, but he knew the places where we, we closed off the last chapter, he went off the Mountain of Olives to be alone. So there were places that Jesus was with himself or with the disciples at least, with no multitudes. Judas knew that. He just had to have the right opportunity, the right moment. 
Jesus' time, shall I say. God is holding Judas back with the works of Satan, saying, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, my son's in the garden praying now. You see the power of, of Job 1 and 2 that God has over Satan? All right, you're going to betray my son, but you ain't going to do it till I'm ready. Okay? You just get that little smirk off your face, Judas. You're going to do when I tell you to do it. And Jesus tells his disciples when Judas is going to do it. How's that? So, there came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. He sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? He said unto them, behold, when ye enter into the city, Jerusalem, there shall a man meet you. All right. Two sexes, going to be a male. Bearing a pitcher of water. You know, how much, you know what other things he could have been carrying? You know what men were walking in and out of Jerusalem carrying and holding and all that? Well, it's got to be a pitcher of water. Why water? Do you, know what you, you know what you had to do with that water for the past? You had to wash it. The priests had to wash themselves at the brazen altar. I mean, at the... the, yeah, the, yeah, the of all things, the water. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. That's kind of funny. They're just following. And he shall say unto the good, and ye shall say unto the good man in the house, the master. Well, how many times have you saw that name being used? The master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. Now, it's a busy time of the year in Jerusalem. It's the Passover. They couldn't find room at the inn in Bethlehem with all the people, but they can find room for Jesus here. Of all the houses that are going to house people, God prepared one house for Jesus to have his final night with his disciples. Before time has ever started, God had made a reservation to stay at a place for dinner. He shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And you know the women followed Jesus all around, so you know the women were there making it with the men. The women prepared the meal. The women did everything to be. And when the hour was come, now, here we go. When the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him, including Judas. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Here he goes again. For I say unto you, I will not I will not eat more I will I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. When he's resurrected from the grave, he has honeycomb and a fish. So he's not going to have no more food to eat until he meets his disciples again after the resurrection. So from the night here, Five days, three three days and three nights. This is this is day one, day two. He's brought before Pilate. Five days, no food. His last meal is the meal he has with his disciples, and yet he carries that cross up to Calvary, beaten, hungered, and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, "Take this." And divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. You better remember what happened tonight, boys. Christians, you better remember what happened now. That Lord's Supper is not for salvation, it's for remembrance. 
Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, this, cu this cup, not what's in the cup. Catholics got it wrong. The Protestant church has got it wrong. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. What is this cup? The cup that Jesus will take on the cross. All the sins of the world, not death. God had no problem with death. He had a problem with the sins of death. You know, if he did not take those sins on, on the cross, he couldn't die. The wages of sin is death. The cup, and he's in the garden. <laughs> Father, take this cup. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the day. Now let me ask you a question. Did the Lord's Supper just get happen, right? You can see that he said, this is the bread, this is the cup. Do this, remember, you see that, right? You do see that he says that the hand of him that betrayed him, which we know is Judas, is there, right? Well, the Roman Catholic Church will tell you that Judas stepped out already. See, the, the Mass is so holy that Judas could not take part of it because he, he had the devil. So their excuse is, I don't know what their Bible would say, is Judas has already left the room by the time Jesus does this. You haven't read Luke. The bread and the cup <coughs> has been offered to the disciples. Take this. This is of my body. Take this. This is of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. This follows Paul with the Lord's Supper. To the Lord come. Behold, the hand of him that betrays me, Judas, is with me on the table how do you escape the fact that Judas is right there and partook of the Lord's Supper? So when you go into a Baptist church and you have the Lord's Supper, don't think everybody's holy. Just because they take the bread and the wine, however your church do it, doesn't mean they're right with God. And Paul, later on, when we, we, Lord willing, we get to Corinthians, Lord willing, you will see that the Lord's Supper will have consequences if you don't do it right. Judas will die. And he didn't have to die. He could have repented and got right. So get the fact is the Lord's Supper and Judas are, are here. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it is determined, which you'd be saying as it is written, to fulfill the scriptures. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. The disciples don't know what's going on, but Judas does. He imagine Judas, he's at that table. Boom, boom, boom. The one at the table, it, it betrayed me. Boom, 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 boom. All right, pass me, pass me an olive. Boom, boom, boom. Woe unto the man that did. Boom, 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 boom. If he's got any conscience. And the rest of the disciples are like, what? What, what's he talking about? They have no idea what has happened behind the scenes, but only two do. Jesus and Judas. Your mama may not know. Your preacher may not know. Your spouse may not know, but you and God know. Everybody around you. Get that fact. Because watch what watch what they're saying. Woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Judas. We know that. We've already seen 22. And they began to inquire amongst themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. They don't realize it's already happened. They're like, all right, Jesus is into prophecy. He just said something's prophecy. Is it going? No, it's not prophecy. It's already happened. The accusation against Judas has already been proclaimed by the judge. And he hasn't done nothing yet, really. He just went to the priest and said, hey, I'll make a deal with you. You see how Jesus warned Judas? You see how God warns you? Judgment. Listen, why do you stand on the street and preach the word of God? Because I'm warning them what the judge is going to do. God has sent me to go tell those people what I'm going to do to them. And warn them. And this is what Jesus is doing for Judas. Judas, I'm giving you opportunity. Like that man that, that took that gold wedge and the barbed orange garment, Joshua, all right, bring that, 
bring the, the bring the, the tribe. All right, come on, you better get right, Aiken. All right, bring the family, Aiken. You better get right. I'm telling you, bring the father, Aiken. And by the time he got to bring that son, Aiken, it, it was too late. You go through that list in Joshua, you find how many times that God said, okay, Aiken, come on out. You better step out right now. Because if I call you out, you're in trouble. And there was also a strife. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back here. Verse 15. Before I suffer, right? So what happens every time Jesus tells them about the coming suffering of him? They get arguing about who's the best. Wait a minute. If I read Isaiah 53 correctly and the suffering of Jesus Christ, I would think that Jesus is the best. Among them, which of them should be the counted the greatest? There they go again. I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. The Gentiles are going to be, Lord, who's the best of us? Well, sometimes you just feel sorry for Jesus. Have you ever had somebody like that in your life? You, you know, you're about to, you know, you know, trouble's coming for. I know it's coming. And you're like, well, and they talk about themselves. And he said unto them, "The kings of the Gentile exercise lordship over the, the kings of the Gentiles. We're not Jewish here. This is a Jewish. Don't mind the Gentiles. You guys are doing a Gentile thing. Knock it off. He's rebuking them. You're Jews." It's a Jewish book. Stop it. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. Don't you be like them Gentiles. You know Peter's loving this. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that do, doth, 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 I don't know, sir. You know what? Don't look for a position so you don't have to do nothing. Look to do something and await the position. For what is greater, he that sitteth at me or he that serveth? Is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you as he that serveth. I bring the food. I am going to go to the cross to bring you salvation, boys. And I'm king. I'm God. I'm almighty. And I'm going to serve so that your sins may be paid for. Now shut up and knock it off. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. So it wasn't just the temptations on the, on the mount. It's been all over. And I appoint unto, unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. Kingdom. That's what the Jews are looking for. A kingdom. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That's the millennial kingdom. Twelve tribes of Israel sitting on thrones. Twelve seats. Twelve. Somebody's got to replace that seat. Now is it Matthias in Acts 1 or 2? Or is it Paul? That's a question that we don't know. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may shift you as we. Now, humanly possible, he just told you, one of you guys are going to betray me, right? Which has already happened. Now he goes about all this authority in that. And he turns to, turns to Peter and says, Simon, Simon, Satan. Then one of the other disciples looks like, uh-oh, Peter. You the one. And yet we know that Jesus is talking about a whole different subject. And what I think he's talking about here is when Peter is going to say, I know you not. I don't know him. Leave me the blank alone. Because in John, he tells the women, go, go, get, go tell my disciples and Peter. I don't care what you teach. All that. that looks like that Peter was taken out for denying the Lord. But Satan now has 
can I say? He is now in the picture for two of the disciples, Judas and Peter. And Jesus stands in for Peter and not Judas. Isn't that interesting? Judas and Peter have free wills. Judas has already determined from what we know in the Bible. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to do whatever I have to do it. And Jesus knows that. And Jesus knows the heart of Peter. Like, he needs some help. He loves me. He really loves me. He's got a foot in his mouth, but he really loves me. Judas doesn't really care. And you got to realize, say something. Well, you know, I pray for this family member. I pray for this friend for the Lord. And you don't know their heart. They have a free will of God, but God may already say, you know what, they're just, by their own free will, they'll never get right. They'll never get saved. They'll never do. Now, I'll answer that prayer for that person because, you know, he gets himself in trouble. He does wrong, but, you know, he really loves me. And the best ability he does may look like it flops, but, you know, he, he's really, he, he tries. Shift you as wheat. Separate. Depart. Or examine. Critically. Baptists do that with other Baptists. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not. You know, we're talking about a faith issue here. And when thou art converted. Strengthen the brethren. Acts chapter 2. What's one of the first things we hear Peter say at the close of John? I go fishing. And he's out there in a boat naked. He wasn't converted yet. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Really, Peter? And he said, I tell you, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou has thrice, thrice deny that thou knowest me. All right. It's nighttime, dinner time, right? Tomorrow morning when the cock crows, you're going you're gonna to have denied me three times. We are after 6 p.m. Tuesday night. We're going to go into Wednesday morning, not Good Friday. We're going to cock crow at 6 a.m. in the morning. By 6 p.m. Wednesday night, Jesus will be on that cross, dying. He just had his last meal Tuesday night. Tuesday night, he's going into the garden. Tuesday into Wednesday morning, he's at the kangaroo court. Of the Pharisees and the chief priest. Wednesday, he's spending the day with Pilate and the Roman government and will die on the cross. He said, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lack ye anything? Said, no, nothing. We had all we need. Then said he unto them, But now, he that has a purse, let him take it. It's a small bag. In the Bible, men should not wear what pertained to a woman. Uh, in the Bible, the men had the purses. Okay? You want to read the Bible? You want to study the Bible? The men had the purses. Let him take it. Likewise, his script. And he that has no sword... Let him sell his garment and buy one. Uh-oh, get yourself some protection. Because you're going to go in paths where there are robbers and stealers. And... Remember that guy that, that the Good Samaritan helped? He fell among thieves. I think Paul even said that was one of the pearls of his life. I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. So he's like, all right, now that you're going to go out in the book of Acts, you take your purse, you get yourself your coat, and go. 
Now you got to start living. You got to live and learn and go. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. There's 12 men. Two swords is enough. You mean all 12 men don't pack a pistol? I'd like to say something else more, but that would be just unequal to say. And he came out and went as he was wont. And Jesus did, just did what he wanted to do. Everything he wanted to do was just holy and right. I wish I could do that. I wish I could have a thought life like that. Is everything I want to do? Oh, can't do that. Sorry, Lord. Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ. To the Mount of Olives. That's one of the places he went alone. Judas knows that. We saw that in 21, didn't we? And his disciples also followed him. So now we're getting under Judas ground now. He knows this is one of the places that Jesus goes to be alone. And when he was at the place, he said unto him, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. What's the temptation? To leave. I don't mean just walk away from the trouble. I mean just totally leave. And have nothing to do with me no more. Thinking I'm a failure. And he withdrew from them about a stone's cast. And throw a stone. That's how far he went. And kneeled down and prayed. Now we know in Matthew, Mark, and John. That he stops the disciples. He pulls Peter, James, and John. And then he goes off by himself. It's night time. This is the final free night that Jesus has. And what's he doing? What's he doing knowing he's going to die? What is he doing knowing that this is the last day? Is he chugging a log at the bar, having a good time, getting some women? No, he's in the garden by himself praying to the Father. And his disciples are asleep. Because they just had a big meal. Don't you feel like you want to go to bed when you just had a big meal? They just had bread, they just had wine, they just had uh, uh, lamb, herbs, whatever they have at a Jewish Passover. They just had an upper room. Their bodies digesting. They're sleeping. Father, if conditional, if thou will be willing, remove this cup from me. Jesus is asking, after 33 and a half years living with man, sin, God never felt sin. God never knew what sin was. Sin, that leprous person, maybe missing a body part. That man with his hand that withered. That woman crying over her son that died. Lazarus. Seeing those people do that to that person. Seeing someone steal from another and gross and grotesque sins. This cup for me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy be done. If Jesus would have stopped right there, we would never be in glory. We would be going to hell. You know what about this? I'll die, Father, but not with those sins. He couldn't die without the sins. The wages of sin is death. As the father said, okay, son, you know what? I love you very much. Yeah, don't take the sin charge. He wouldn't have died. You can't have the gospel buried and rose again, according to the scriptures, without death. And you can't have death without sin. And Jesus went to the father and said, those sin, father, you don't understand. And you know what God had to say? I don't. That's why I became you. What's it feel like to have to go potty? What's it feel like to fall asleep? What's it feel like to hurt? Oh, the hurting hasn't happened yet, has it? Now, he's going to experience the pain of sin upon his body. And don't you dare ever tell me that you suffered more pain than Jesus. Because God, according to Isaiah 53, whipped it all out upon him. Everybody. 
You read Isaiah 53, it says, because of me. The wrath and holy God that has all right to beat the living crap out of me. Because I'm a sinner and I'm worthy of it. Did it to his son. And I'm going to use the word beat the crap. If you don't like that, I have no other way to explain. And Jesus says that sin. Oh, Father. Can you just picture one of those little girls over in Orient? Father's about to say, you know what? I'm going to sell you into a sex trade because I need money. Can you just picture that little girl? Oh, Father, no. I'm going to do it. I need the money. I don't care about you. Think about some of the sins that, that people are put into by someone else. Please don't. Daddy, please don't drink that beer. You, you, you ruin us. Come on, Dad. Jesus goes to his father and says, But I got to do it. I love him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but thine be done. And the Father says, And there appeared an angel unto heaven, strengthening him. God calls one of the angels, Will you go down there and just comfort my son? I'm about to do something I've never done ever in all eternity. But it has to be done. Will you go down there and pat him on the back, give him a kiss, do something, please. Tomorrow I'm going to have to forsake him for what he's doing, what he's praying right now, exactly what his prayers are right now. Tomorrow I'm going to have to shut heaven up, close it all up, and just turn my back on him. I wonder what angel he said. And the sad thing in the story is Peter, James, and John are asleep. They don't even see it. And being in agony. I'm not talking about the whips yet. I'm not talking about the thorns. I'm talking about in prayer. I'm a great prayer warrior. Yeah, really? He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as of great drops of blood. When did you ever pray like that? And this is that sweet hour of prayer that we sing about, which I don't think we should sing about because we don't pray like Jesus prays. And this is a three-hour prayer because he went once and prayed for an hour, came back, found him asleep, and went back and prayed as he did the first time, which would have been an hour. He came back, found him asleep again, went back again, prayed as the same, but for three hours in prayer. The sweet hour prayer is here that he and God got together and said, we still got to do what we have to do for man. I got one that just sold me. I got one that's going to deny me for everything I do. And then they're going to be up in the upper room. They're not even going to believe the testimony that I've risen from the grave. Great drops of blood falling. And that's a medical fact. And you can look it up. It's just, it was just too much to write down. Exodus 27, 20. Matthew 26, 36. Mark 14, 32. Great drops of blood falling down. The His blood is already now being spilled. By his sweat to the Father in heaven. Acts 20, 28 says that blood is God's blood. If you say otherwise, you'll be damned. And when he arose from the prayer, he was come to his disciples, found them sleeping for sorrow. Comes to them and there's no comfort. They're asleep. Makes them unhappy that they're sleeping. He said, Watch. He said to them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray. Least ye enter in temptation. They didn't do good praying because they run. But it was according to Scripture. And while he yet spank, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve. Okay, so Judas is not in the garden. When all the disciples go. The, the 12 disciples are going to the garden. <coughs> Judas takes an exit and goes to the priest. And none of the disciples even, where did Judas go? Here he comes. 
One of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Oh, really? Jesus just had the most miserable night ever yet to happen before the, the, the pain and suffering. And the one of the disciples go, Mwah. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Proverbs 27, 6. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Well, give him that much credit. Shall we kill? Shall we pull out our handguns? Shall we protect you, Jesus? We're man. We got our guns. We can protect you, Jesus. Yeah? And then have God send me off into hell? Because you want to pick up your gun and fight? Because I can't, I cannot be saved by man and a weapon. I need the Savior to die on the cross and shed His blood, not in a gunfight. So put your guns away; they're not going to save you. And what if you take that gun and defend yourself and shoot an unsaved man? You just sent him off into hell. Even Jesus died for a thief. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. So we asked the question, then we used the gun or the weapon. So we really weren't asking. We just wanted to ask the question and do the motive so it would be right. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye this thus far. So it means allow. Stop. Suffer. But allow me to do this, boys. It needs to be done. And he touched his ear and healed him. I'd love to have been there for that because the ear was cut off. Is there an ear on the face and an ear in the ground? Or did he pick up the ear and put it back? We don't, oh, the scripture doesn't tell us what happened that night. It would have been funny to see. And Jesus said unto the chief priests, There they are. And the captains of the temple and the elders, There they are which were come to him but you come out as against a thief with swords and staves staves Exodus 25 13 to 15 25 27 28 staves were used to carry the utensils or the instruments of the ark the altar the brazen altar the table the incense altar the, the Ark of the Covenant all had rings for staves. And they come to Jesus with a stave. A stave is a whip, is a long pointed tool used by shepherds. So they come after Jesus with a tensile liking for the, for the temple and what a shepherd uses. Against God and against the sheep. If that's not God in Jesus Christ and God in man, I don't know what else could be. When I was daily with you in the temple, we left that off in 21. He stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour, the power of darkness. No one's around. Then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house and Peter followed and we read I think John says also John was there too but Peter now is the subject and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sat down together Peter sat down amongst them he's with the world he hasn't separated himself he's at the campfire with the heathen Romans. Peter is sitting at a campfire with a bunch of Romans. Oh, not me, Lord. He's sitting down with a bunch of Jews who are going to kill their Messiah. But a certain maid, certain, there's that certain again, beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. You know, if you're a true Christian, you're marked. They know who you are. They know you don't fit in. Stop pretending. 
to stand out and be a Christian? And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Liar. But haven't we denied the Lord? The Holy Spirit says, Give that man a gospel track. Mm, no. You just had a perfect opportunity to speak up for me. What? No. So I'm not going to pick on Peter. No way am I going to pick up because I've denied the Lord too many times. So, Peter, you're just like me, and I'm just like you. We're both sinners. After a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. Peter said, Man, I am not. I've done it twice. So I'm not going to rule. I'm not going to bag Peter. I've done it twice. About the space of one hour. It's been a long time, hasn't it? One hour. Jesus has been before the chief priest at least one hour. <clears throat> it's the middle of the night. You know how you know? Because the cock is going to crow pretty soon. He's had no sleep. He's standing the whole entire time. He's walked to Gethsemane to where this priest lives in the middle of the night. You think they're going to let him sit down? You think they're going to let him lay down? You think they're going to let him get some sleep? He's on trial. They want him dead. They want him destroyed. They're just counting the minutes the pilot gets up and opens up shop in the morning. If they're not going to get sleep, they're not going to let him get sleep. And he's not going to eat because he already told you he's not going to eat. <clears throat> Space one hour after another confidently affirmed. I mean, I'm for sure. Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew, 6 a.m. There comes the sun. We know the times and events of Jesus' death more than we know the death. I mean, the birth of Jesus Christ. And yet we try to celebrate the birth is more important. The birth was important. But when was the last time you had a Bible-believing Baptist church that loved the Lord, loved the Word, and are saved? Say, you know what, let's accommodate because we're supposed to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. When was the last time we laid out that week? And the Catholics will do it. Wrong. They'll pick Good Friday. Fat Tuesday. Lent. Well, what's the Baptist do in honor? Oh, yeah, we, we have once in a while, we have the Lord's Supper. and You know, let's get it done with and, okay, we're done. When I partake in the Lord's Supper, my church, man, when we're talking about that bread, I think about the, the skin, the flakes of Jesus. On the nails, on the wood, on the cat of nine tails, on the thorns, on the fist. On the shroud they put over him, on the robe, when there's blood, I think about wherever that blood went, God's blood. That's what I try to think about. I have a hard time. That's all I'm going to say about that. I have a hard time, but I try to think about the blood and the body of Jesus Christ when we partake in the Lord's Supper. And then I try to think about all the sins that I have not confessed, all the sins that I have done against Jesus Christ, that he's sitting in that garden, Father, please. And that he still went to the cross with my sins. That's what the Lord's Supper is supposed to be about. That's what I try to do. I've, that's what I've always tried to do. All the Lord's Suppers. Kind of hard when someone else is talking. All the churches I've been. I think it should be a time of silence. Just get off by yourself with God. I know one church that does that. You just go off by yourself and you get it right with God. And I've never been to that church, but that's what I've been told. The cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Oh, can you just imagine that moment? <laughs> and it is Jesus turning. Man, if you didn't have terror. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus is in the garden telling the Father, Oh, this cup, please. Right, hey, 
your will. An angel comes down. He is great drops of blood sweating. He's at a kangaroo court. And he has time to turn to Peter like, I love you. I really love you. I told you it was going to happen. I still love you because I'm going to that cross tomorrow. Well, it'll be now today. That's the love of God. He didn't rebuke Peter. He didn't cuss him out. Peter cussed. Another gospel. Looked at Peter like, I told you. Why didn't Peter just run to Jesus at that moment? Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he said unto him before the cock crew, Thou, hast, thou shalt deny me thrice. Sunrise. And Peter went out and whipped bitterly. Jesus is alone again. When was the last time you whipped bitterly over your sins? I, I gotta confess, I haven't. Except every time I read these last chapters of the Gospels, then it gets my heart going. Man, I don't read the last chapters of the Gospels enough in my life. I read all the way through the Bible. Yeah, I do that, but I don't read the last chapters of the Bible much. Maybe I should. Maybe I should have one month. I'll just do the last few chapters of each of the Gospels. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. Why? What did he do? And I get upset when somebody mocks me on the street. When they had blindfolded him, they played ping the tail on the donkey. They gave him a stick and had a piano. I, I, I'm going to say something. I have no idea. I'm gonna, blind man's bluff. I don't know anything about that game. If it's wicked, I'm sorry, but that's just okay. blind man's bluff. No, no, we have fun in games, but they're going to blindfold him and struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophet, prophesy, who is it that smoked it? They cover his eyes and they punch him in the face. Okay, tell us who did that. Boom. All right, who did that one, Jesus? Come on, Mr. Prophet. Come on, Mr. God. Boom. Tell me who did it. Come on. <laughs> Come on, boy. Who did that one, Jesus? Yeah, you know what? Revelation 20. Joe Smo, step up. It was you that hit me the second time right here in the cheek. Oh. Oh. Smack. Oh, you expect me to tell you then. I'll tell you at my time. Joe Soap, step up here. It was you that got me in the nose the third time. Oh. Jesus will tell them who hit him. And Jesus will tell them who mocked him. Just not now. Because they may, now listen, they may got saved. And then Jesus won't remember what's under the blood. But if they didn't get saved and they died in their sin, Revelation 20, it was you that punched me the fourth time. Hey, let's say one got saved. Let's give him a good name. Let's, let's give him Peter. Let's just say Peter. Let's say a guy named Peter punches Jesus in the chin. Those guys, well, what about Peter? He punched you. I see no sins in Peter. But he punched you, Lord. He's the first one. It's under the blood. I don't see it. First John 1 9. These men don't get saved. Jesus will tell them who, who hit them. Oh, that's a remarkable thought. Who's, who is it that smoked thee? And many other things blasphemy spanked they against him. Oh man, they had a field day of four-lettered words. In other words. These are Jewish people, by the way. God's people. Before the chief priest. And the chief priest is loud them. They're cuffing, filthy, religious hypocrites. And now it's all coming out. God's people acting like this. Supposedly. And as soon as it was day, 6 a.m., the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, 
So it looks like the chief priest and all that, it looks like they went off and had a little nap and let the soldiers of them go to town. Okay, we're not going to see what you're going to do. We'll be back in the morning. Hmm? You think, uh, you know, cop br brutality. What about this brutality against a Jew? <laughs> yeah. Thou doubt the Christ. Tell us. He said, if I tell you, you will not believe. But that's not a statement of damning them. And if I ask you, you will not answer me, neither let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Acts chapter 1. Amen. Glory to God. That's my Savior. What's the power of God? Came up out of that grave. What's the power of their small G-O-D? They stay in the grave. Then said they all, Art thou the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. Ooh. Ooh. I got a note here. John 10 30. That's not the note I was looking for. I was looking for the note back in Exodus where God and Moses are having a little talk. Well, what's your name? I am. Jesus never professed to be God. Really? Really? I guess your worldly Bible won't tell you that, but my King James Bible says, I'm God. I. And they said, what need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. Now, get that. Please get this. The accusation that they have finally against Jesus is he says he's God. But they won't have the nerve to tell that to, to the Roman governor. Because the Roman governor ain't going to care because they got a God of everything just like the Egyptians. So if you go up to Pilate who believes in multi-gods, this guy says he's the holy God. Pilate's like, so what? Give me a statue of him and I'll put him on my dashboard. Okay? Just give me some, another statue or give me something I can wear around my neck or have my wife wear around her neck. And hey, I'll be perfectly happy to have another God. So they got to try to find something for the Roman government to put him to death. Being a god was probably not a, a, a thing. But if you can usurp the authority of Caesar, okay, that's something different. So now it's going to be Pilate's turn, Lord willing. Lord Terry's, we'll look at Pilate. We just look at the chief priests. Jesus, now I want you to get this before we close. He's already bleeding. He's already got black and blues. He's already being puffed. I mean, puffy. And he hasn't reached Pilate yet. 